Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing some stair work, um, specifically we're going to be putting a, a banister base rail and spindles uh, on this return behind me where a wall used to be after we've had some alterations done on this job. So basically what we can see is uh, this house, this job's had an extension put on it, I have done a couple of other videos on it, um, putting the roofs on mainly, and what there used to be was a wall that used to come all the way through here. So as you can see, this half mule here was just fixed straight to the wall. But obviously we've altered it now and um, this is a landing way that goes into the new extension. So what I've got to do today is basically return this handrail and spindles back through here. Um, now, uh, we've got some additional stair parts that have been ordered. Hopefully they've uh, come right, I didn't order them, the customer did. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take this mule off and try and release the, I don't know if I should just screw through the end there, looks like it shouldn't be too difficult. Take this newel off, fit a new newel onto here, and then a half newel at that end. Um, but before I do that, what I've got to do is make up, um, I'm not going to have an apron on here, um, just a quick stair anatomy lesson. Um, this part here is what we call the apron, and this is the bit that basically um, covers what is the floor joist. Now, and some people like the aprons to return all the way along, but again, because this was an original wall, this would have gone right up. So what the customer's done is just um, cut the wall off at this level and then brought the flooring through. So we're not gonna have an apron here. What I'm actually gonna do is fashion, I don't think we've ordered that. I'm gonna fashion a nosing like this, and I'm going to uh, fix that to the end of this chipboard here. I'm gonna probably uh, glue that and biscuit joint that, and then, Basically what that'll do is it'll bring the, the, uh, the base rail for the spindles out enough so they run into the side of this new newel that I'm putting on. And then what I'm also going to do, just for extra support, and if, if they haven't done it here, I'm going to try and either mould up or buy a big sort of scotia to go under here to give it additional support. Um, so that'll be the first job I do is putting this nosing through here uh, and then I can cut the half newels down, the half newel down on top of it on this end, the full newel down onto it on top of it from that end. We don't need to worry too much about cutting the newels round over the floor because they're not gonna be wobbly because what they'll actually do is find their support through the handrail back onto the, um, the actual uh, staircase newel, which is, as you can see here, look, is housed over the joist. So that's nice and strong. So uh, let's see what I can do. Get this piece of timber, this nosing first, and then uh, see how we get on. So you see what I've done is, because we've got a set point we've got to work to, which is basically the end of this handrail and base rail here, obviously we can't bring, I would have liked to bring this newel a bit further in, but I can't because obviously it's got to go up against uh, this handrail and that base rail, like I said. So what you saw me do there is just, just basically pushed it up to the shoulder of this base rail here and uh, draw around it. And then that gives me an idea, and this is an off cut of the new base rail, obviously, and I've set it in, I'm, I'm only guesstimating at the minute, but it gives me an idea just to see what I'm doing. I've basically uh, put this base rail uh, in about the right amount. Um, and it gives me an idea of how big my nosing needs to be. Now, this nosing obviously is only just sort of flush with this uh, base rail here. I, I wanna bring this nosing out a little bit more so at least it clears the round of the nosing. So what I've got to do now is get myself a piece of timber um, 22 mil thick, which I think is what the floor is, or maybe it's 18, I don't know, I'll double check. Put a double round on it and then fix it to the end of this uh, chipboard here. And I said what I'll do is basically biscuit it and poly polyurethane glue it and that'll be nice and solid. Then I can put this base rail down on top of it and then we can just build off it. Um, drop the newel, half newel down onto it and then this newel down onto it. So get a bit of timber and get on with that.
Nice. So there you go, you saw me just uh, quickly rip down using my table saw, um, rip down the nosing, it's 22 mil wide now, thick now, which is great, by 40 mil, nice little round on there, sand of the Atlas, uh, good as if it came straight out of the mill. So now we can get that fitted and start to move the job, job along. Right, let's just get that, I don't know if that's still on it. Yeah. Can't see what I'm doing half the time. Right, let's get that marked. I'm going to cut off my to here, 45 degrees. Should be there, all right. Lovely. Right, let's put that mark on there. So I've cut my 45 degree mark on this nose in and now I'm just laying it straight onto this one and get the fern tool and multi-tool and cut that off and then we can just put a few biscuits in the back of this one and get it glued onto this chipboard. see there that I just biscuited it in a few places just because the floor's up and down a little bit so I biscuited where I biscuited it where the nosing is flush with the floor and where the floor's a bit high in the middle here and a bit low over here what I'm going to just do is let the polyurethane glue take the strain on that it'll be nice and strong and as I said I've got a, a scotia or a quadrant going up underneath so happy with that fit get that glued up and then it's time for a cup of tea and a sandwich So I've cracked on a bit, as you can see now, uh, that edge uh, lipping's gone in there, capping's gone in there, great. Uh, glue's all dried up now, and as you can see here, <laughs> it dribbled a little bit, that's not, I perhaps should have put some tape on there, but we'll let, we'll let that polyurethane glue go completely off and then it'll just peel off. We don't want to start messing around with polyurethane glue when it's wet because you just smear it all over the place, so we'll, that'll just peel off afterwards. So this is looking good, and I've done a bit of work on the newel, which I think I, sh uh, you saw me just um, rounding the top over here. What I've had to do because, again, this floor sort of where the new floor meets the old floor, and although this is a 22 mil capping, it sits up a little bit. And as you can see here, this floor, 90 mil floor slightly low here, then it raises up. You can see I put a couple of biscuits in and then can't quite see, but here it's slightly high and then back down to level over there. So I can mess about with all this. Um, I can maybe plane the back of the base rail out a little bit to get it sit, sitting nice and flat. But really what I want is this, this uh, edging here, this nosing to be nice and flat, because obviously that's what the um, base rail that the spindles fits into is going to go to, so I want that to be nice and straight. So um, I've cut a small, a tiny, I don't know if you just see it here. There it is, look. So I've cut a tiny step, I can't even see that, a tiny step in the bottom of that newel just to fit over here and I rounded a tiny bit of it out because as I said um, this lippings, this capping doesn't actually sit out enough to fully accommodate the newel um, 
and normally the neural will go all the way through so we're sort of we, it's not how we'd normally do it but we need to work with what we've got so and um, if I just quickly put this neural in here I've fitted it um, so I'll just try and do it one handed so that neural goes into position there as you can see the final positioning it now fits down nicely to the floor and then we've got this like I said the neural slightly over sits over sails but if this new went all the way through which it should then these nosings would just die into the side of it and that would be the correct detail but like i said we've got to work we've got it, what we've got here so that's really cool i'm going to just use a i shall cut a counter bore in here and screw straight away through the end uh i'm not sure whether i'm going to cut a mortise in here and cut a tenon on the handrail or maybe just do the same uh, with that maybe just put a couple of screws through the end um, it's strong enough I mean, it's not ideal because there's this you know normally they should be mortise and tenons but i don't know we'll see um, and then obviously you've got to set the half new lock that end and then we can we can have a look at cutting the hand rail in but yeah that's fitting in there all right now So I've just fixed this new one on temporarily. You saw I put a great big screw through. I counter drilled that as well uh, so that it doesn't end up splitting that because it's quite a big screw. Uh, now what I can do is set this one, this post upright uh, and then I can fit the half new on the other side uh, against the wall and then I can get a measurement for my shoulders uh, between uh, these two newels so I can cut a, a mortise in these posts and a tenon on the handrail. That half newel is now temporarily fixed and this newel is now temporarily fixed. What I'm gonna do now is get the handrail and lay it across the top. And basically what I can then do is sight uh, the edge of these newels up onto it to see how square the shoulders of my tenon joints are gonna be on that handrail. What I don't wanna do is just take a measurement from here to here uh, and then cut uh, my tenons on with square shoulders and it turns out that this this section of the stairs might be slightly out of square to this section of the landing and then what will happen is my uh, joints won't be my shoulders won't sit flush on the on the newel so i'll uh, lay that on and check that now So just as I thought that the one against the wall is leaning out slightly. Let's look at this one. That one is actually nice and square, so you just need to make the shoulders for that uh, the shoulders for that tenon be, be slightly out square. Right now, I need to check this one for upright because that moves around a little bit so that the um, the shoulders on the tenon also square uh, vertical plumb. It doesn't look too bad there. It's actually going to go back that way. That should be level because we check that there. Yep. Excellent. Right, we'll get those marked up and start cutting those. I've taken the half newel off and I've taken the full newel off and what I've done is marked out, and you can see I'm quite lucky here, I put the fixing, I don't know what I was, had a brain, brain fade, I put the fixing for the half newel too high but fortunately it's going to come in where the mortise is so uh, got away with that one so I'll, I'll re-put really that fixing a bit further down, counterbore it and then we can put a plug or something in it. So the handrail goes, it's 50 mil from the bottom of the handrail uh, to the top of the handrail, I'm doing a shoulder on the top so I brought it down so it's come down 10 mil, so basically the, 
Mortis is going to be 25mm wide, 40mm deep, so 40mm long, and I'm not going to go too deep, these are just going to be like a stub tenon, probably not going to draw down them, uh, the glue will hold these fantastically, but I just prefer putting a mortise and tenon on here rather than just screwing it, because I know screws are super strong and they're, they're steel and everything, but I don't know, there's something about a handrail on a landing like that, I just think that uh, the, the tenon coming out of that bit of oak will be just super duper strong and never fail. So uh, what I'm going to do is I've got, where is it? Here it is. I'm just going to cut those by hand. I've got a 22 mil force and a bit in my drill. I'll drill the bulk of it out and then clean the rest of it up with my chisels. So I'll do that. It won't take long. A bit of old school chiseling. Takes me back to my uh, early days as a carpenter. Lovely sound. Oh, that's lovely. What are we doing there? Yeah. There you go. Oh, where we are. There you go. That's one done. Uh, do one on the full mule now. I've got my hand row here and what I've done is cut it 22 mil longer than the shoulder measurements each end because that's obviously how long the tenon is going to be and what I've done is marked uh, this tenon out here so what I'm going to do now is start cutting it I'm just going to cut it with a handsaw um, I'm pretty good with a handsaw I might just keep it shy of the line and then I can pair it off if I need to with the chisel so uh, I make these two cuts first cut the shoulders off and then I've just got to reduce the tenon uh, in height so it's not flush with the top and so I'll get my hands all right and get on with that now. Got a cut 10 mil shoulder on the top there, so let's do that now. It's actually 40 mil ten minutes, so we'll just go over there. Just go straight down out there. That's it. Take that back to there. side of the teeth too close to this shoulder and end up spitting it out so just need to be really careful here. Better off to cut as I said uh, away from the line and then I can pare that down. <laughs> Right, 
clean that up with the chisel. I'm sure it won't be too far off and to give it a test fit into that half yawn and then we can do the other one. Right, let's just give it a quick trial fit. Uh, you can see that around there. Hopefully, I know that it's not too bad that way, look. A little bit off there, let's have a look. It's not bad. Quite right, nice. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I, honestly, I promise I haven't messed about with that. That's straight off the saw look. So, look at that. I, I shouldn't sound surprised. <laughs> That's not bad. Look at that. That, straight off that saw, not even a real fine tooth tenon saw. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I might just tease a tiny bit. Like I said, I left it slightly shy of the line there. But yeah, for a uh, first sort of tryout, I think that's, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, so good, uh, excellent. Still got it there, boy. Right, I'll uh, do the one on, on the other end. through, put the full mule on, glue and screw that on, and then put it up against the, the handrail that's already there, screw that on, and then screw it to the wall, and hopefully um, it should all go nicely and everything should be square and plumb. Right, there we go. So that just lean up there for a second. Yep, just gonna use uh, PVA as a fantastic glue. Um, quite underrated, I think it's uh, very, very good on uh, open grain timber like this. And it doesn't get any, you don't get the right mess like you do with polyurethane. You've got to be careful when you're using polyurethane because it can get everywhere, um, uh, as we saw earlier. Right, so, uh, one more thing. I'm going to put some on the tenon, put it on the tenon, and then basically as that pushes in, that'll push a bit of extra glue back onto the shoulders. We can wipe it all over. Here we go. Plenty. Put a tiny bit in the in the mortise as well. Right, let's get that on. Hopefully, some of the flow tools in the way. Hopefully. Yes. Right. Excellent. So, don't think I won't screw that up yet until it's on. Uh, we'll get it all in position. A little bit of uh, PB on the end of there. There. I'm just going to put a bit of uh, adhesive on the end of this half wheel as well, just a bit of help there. All these things ready. Right, fingers crossed. Here we go. We're going in. Get that on the mark first. So we don't end up with adhesive everywhere. Lovely, that's good. Put that against there. It's looking good so far. Oh, steady there, boy. Right, so I'll get, a, get those fixes in that half new, get that fixed up. Here we go. We're committed now. Squeeze some glue out, love it. Okay. 
I'm going to go up this one. Come back that way a little bit. Find the hole we put in earlier. Oh. Yes, right. Excellent. I've got some nice tension there. Superb. Right. That is looking really good. It's all in line on the bottom. So now I'll just try and put a couple of uh, tiny, if you can see that, down here. I'm just going to put a tiny couple of little skew screws down in there. They'll end up um, below the carpet line on here and then end up below the, uh, the base rail on the back here. Someone's phone's ringing. Brilliant, excellent. Got to wipe this glue off quickly before it goes and starts to dry. Right, so you'll see uh, that's all in. I'm really, really pleased with that. Uh, the eagle eyed amongst you will notice that this is only, I think, a 70 mil newel and this is a 90 mil newel. I think we sort of came to the decision that rather than make this a 70 by 90, it would look better if it was a 90 by 90. Uh, as I said earlier, it's not ideal because normally these newels would go all the way through and, and fix to the floor. So you can see what I was saying about because the newels don't go through, they actually fly past the line of the nosing, which is why I've had to put a little, as you can see it, you can, I put a little round on it there, and this end you can see the same look, a little round, because normally this would run all the way through and that would die into it, but you know, we, it is what it is here, there's only so much we can do. So I'm really, really happy, those joints have gone in an absolute treat, mortise and tenon on the end of this handrail here, they've gone all in nice and square, cleaned all the glue off, what I'll do now is let all that set up a little bit. I'm going to have it's now lunchtime, have a sandwich and a cup of tea. Um, all this stuff's uh, going to clean off nice and easily. So really have broken the back of it now. It's just a case of putting the, the base rail in and then having do a little bit of maths uh, and working out our spaces. So we get um, a space that's no bigger than 100 millimetres for building rigs. Um, but also we don't end up with um, a funny little gap at the end. So I like all my gaps to be even all the way along. So I just... Uh, gauge them in or out a couple of millimetres so that they all fit in there with uh, nice even gaps. So I can hear the kettle boiling and uh, I'll come back and get on with this after lunch.